Okay, so this is going to be the fourth episode of Ray Tracing in Java, and this will be the third episode about utilities. <coughs> so, in the previous episodes, we created these classes, normal, point 2D, point 3D, and vector 3D. So we have two more classes that we have to create. <coughs> One of the most important and fundamental to the ray tracing system would be a color class. Makes sense. So what we're going to do is define, oh not double, we want float. Three values, red, green, and blue. And the computer handles these as floats. So don't bother defining them as integers. I know in um, OpenGL, if you use the integer GL color, it actually um, converts the integer values into floats. What we're going to do is make a default constructor. You got to add an F to the end when you utilize floats. So our default constructor will create a color black. Now this is going to be useful for when we use our loop to see the interactions of the ray we shoot out with the different objects. Because over time as you have more reflections or refractions the color will be added up and then eventually averaged sampling too uh, let's see we'll create a unique color with float r float g and float b As always, a copy constructor. That's it for the constructors. What we need is an in place add method. So in this case, r plus equals color dot r g plus equals color dot g b plus equals color dot b so we can add colors together we also want i'm not sure let's see in place or turn a new color let's just do in place we'll call it divide and this will be a double scalar Actually, it could be an integer. Let's just make an integer. We'll call it scalar. Because when we do anti-aliasing, we usually divide by the total number of samples, which is an integer value. So we will try this. You can always modify it later as we work through the code for our ray trace system. Let's see, what would be a, a good one to have? I guess 2 int. integer so we will take our color and convert it into an integer value uh, which is useful because our buffered image needs an integer value for the color <coughs> so what we can do is return int let's see R times 255 and then left shift 16 or that with R G times 255 left shift 8 and then 255 and then we don't need a shift at all so that's right let's see um, 255 so 2 integer and then left shift so off the top Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, we might need a clamp function, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, clamping would be if our values go below zero, just set them to zero. If they go above 1.0, set them to 1.0 because obviously the computer defines color from 0.0, .0 to 1.0, so there's no point in having values outside of this range. But for now, I think that is all we need. 
helps us create our final utility class, the ray. Now this is probably the most fundamental because the ray tracing system is based on creating rays and shooting them out from a view plane and seeing how these rays interact with various objects in the scene. So what we need for our ray is an origin and a direction. Should I call it direction? Vector. When I'm accessing these Okay, well, we'll just go with origin and direction. <coughs> so, create a unique constructor. We don't need a default constructor because we are not going to create default rays. We're going to create very specific rays. So, in this case, we will just make our unique constructor. So, origin, this.origin equals new origin, that's why we created the copy constructor. This dot direction equals new, oops, why did I put origin? Point 3D, vector 3D, direction. And that is it for our ray class. And I think that is actually it for this episode we have color a normal point 2d point 3d ray and vector 3d i think that is all we need for now so i'm gonna end this episode right here thank you for watching